What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mukala Kabongo, once again, bringing you another Athletes Corner. This time we have the Eason brothers, Drew and Shane Eason, out of Methuen, Massachusetts, who attended Methuen High. Drew, older brother, senior quarterback for Methuen, who was a record setter this past football season. Shane, younger brother, running back, who also was a record setter. We talked to them about the 2023 season. We talked to Drew about his decision to attend Stonehill College. We talked to Shane about wrestling and all the other stuff going on with them, and specifically football. Also, the two brothers were all state players this, place, this past season as well. So check this athlete's corner out. I hope you all enjoy it. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. And today we got some special guests. We got Shane Eason and Drew Eason yes, from Methuen. What's going yes, on, fellas? Thank you for I having me, my man. Hey, man. Glad you guys could make it. Took a little while to make this happen, but we're here. We're here. We're here. Exactly. Um, you guys. I mean, first of all, how's everything going? Uh, you guys got school vacation right now. How's yeah, everything's everything great. Going good. We're just chilling right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basketball again, getting ready for state tourney time, you know, no. crunch time right now. Yeah, yeah, it's been a grind for basketball season mm. in that MVC, man. Yeah, it. MVC is tough. Yeah, I've seen a couple TSC. Dog fight every night, no matter who you play. But that helps you guys, though. That no, strength the schedule, definitely. I mean, even though, like, we're 11 and 8, like, our strength the schedule's got us all the way up to, like, right around the 20s, so yeah. we're doing good. Yeah, so y'all, yeah, y'all should be having a good spot. Uh, wrestling, wrestling's over for yeah, you? Yeah, wrestling's over for me, but, you know, it was a good season. I had fun, definitely. My team, we did good. Had three losses against really good teams, but how when did you when did you start with the wrestling? So I started when I was younger and then I took a little break and picked up basketball for a couple of years. Yeah. And then um when I came back to high school, like I wasn't gonna do a winter sport and I was just at one of the meets watching and then me and my friend like we were interested, so we decided to go up to the coach, talk to him, and then ever since then I started wrestling again. Yeah, yeah and and wrestling is it's just you and the opponent. It's not like you have yeah, people exactly. surrounding so. you. So it's kind of like physical and mental at the same time. Yeah, it's you got you all the eyes on you. Like everyone in the gym is watching just you and the other person wrestling. So it's basically you just you got to go out there, give it all you got. You got to have a lot of mental and physical toughness. Yeah. What's, got, what's the strategies you, you would use for wrestling? Or what's like the strategies the coaches would come up for you wrestling depending on the po opponent? So, yeah, depending on the opponent, like, you want to maybe watch some of their matches on uh, flow. You see how they wrestle, like, what their best, like, uh, takedowns are mm -hmm. and how to defend them. Yeah. And, like, when you're on top and bottom, like, you got to see what moves they're, like, not well at and what moves you can hit on them. Yeah, yeah. It's also interesting because a lot of professional professional wrestlers were – they were either a two sports star in like high school yeah. or college. Oh, yeah. like, like, Brock Lesnar, I, Brock best, Lesnar, best athlete of all time. WWE, <laughs> UFC, NFL, like Ro he did it all. Roman Reigns, yeah, he yeah. played D tackle, I think, at Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, the best athletes. And I think Ric Flair played Major League Baseball. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I think he was drafted by the Cardinals, and don't quote me, but I <laughs> think that's true. But so yeah, uh, football season. Bethune has been making some noise the last yes, several sir. years. I remember, I, I remember, I watched uh, uh, Muniz. J JP yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that first, so my first glance at him, they came down here when they played English. I think it was like his senior year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was my first glance at him. I was like, oh, okay. Um, he graduates, mm -hmm. other guys graduate, and then it comes you two. Yes, sir. Like, so it keeps the ship rolling. How was it when uh, when those guys graduated and then you guys, it was you guys' turn yeah, to just kind of take over? I think you said uh, Lin at Lin English. That was, I yeah. think that was my first ever start. That year, uh, same thing. I was a little nervous. I didn't know I was starting the game until we got on the bus. Like literally, me and Alexander uh, Silva, who's one of my good friends, we had a QB battle going all the way through preseason. And literally, like like I said, until we got on the bus, like we didn't know who was starting, going back and forth scrimmages. But ultimately, they gave me the starting job. And same thing, like. We just like kept going the whole way, and JP was a huge factor for me. Like mm -hmm. he was always like helping me. He knew I was a little bit younger, but he was always there for me because he was a previous quarterback too. But we moved him to running back, just needing guys there. Right. And he was obviously phenomenal at that spot. But he was, you know, same thing, really helpful. You know, really, really good guy to look up to. And overall, like Jason Silverio, Will McKinnon, Braden Carter, all guys that were phenomenal. Like phenomenal receivers, played in college. Uh, whether it was Will with lacrosse. Uh, Braden with football, uh, just great guys overall, and they just really wanted to see me succeed too. Mm -hmm. So when they graduated, 
they were still hitting me up all like all the time yeah. and like led me through my junior year helping me like get be the, like have that success throughout the year and even this year just still like supporting me along the way and I think they were just great guys to have like support like teammates at my back. Yeah, that was your sophomore year when you first started. Yeah, right? my first start yeah. was at. You were a freshman. Yeah, I was a freshman. So yeah, you, so I started defense. Okay. I started at safety. Because yeah. we had like mostly our whole lineup was seniors mm -hmm. from the whole offense and pretty much the whole defense. So I never really got my shot freshman year on offense, but the next year, sophomore year, when all the seniors are gone, we all like we knew we had to step up big, put in a lot of work in the off season. Yeah, we had a lot of shoes to fill. And that's kind of and that's um that's kind of really being out there as a freshman, does your first what your first varsity moments and stuff. Uh, I know there's nerves and stuff like that, but how were you just able just was it just like another day at the office, or, or was there any like hard times, or did you did you just fit right in with yeah, whatever so, they were doing? Yeah, uh, so the first two games, I actually I didn't start. No. I was on the bench. So after that, like that was kind of a little frustrating because I've known like my whole life I've been like the star player of my team. Like mm -hmm. I've always been on the field, so it was kind of tough to be like on the uh, on the bench. But week three, I got my shot to start, and then the rest of the season, I just kept doing my job and I got to stay in and. Got the job done. Yeah, and that and in that season, you guys had, you guys had that big win against Everett. JP made that big play yeah, on the yeah. stretch. I know Everett that year was favored to win it all. Uh, what, what was that like? Just getting that upset and um, proving that you that Methuen can play with every, with anybody. Yeah. Oh, uh, that Everett game was huge. I mean, I feel like that's really what started this. Really, whatever you want to call this movement for Methuen football. Mm -hmm. I think that that win was really the biggest move forward going forward like in the program yeah and I think that game was tough I think obviously it was a dogfight till the end but I know going into it uh the whole team was like really determined we really thought like we could pull it off we were, were just confident in ourselves we prepared like crazy all week uh just doing everything we can yeah. studying and we just knew that if we we were just put in the right situation we knew that if we were just doing what we were told by our coaches followed the game plan just stick to execution, then we could pull it out. And I mean, for me, that was a big one too. Obviously, my dad being from Everett, playing yeah. run back there, my mom cheerleader from Everett too. And so it was like a huge game where even all the coaches after the game from Everett like knew me, came up to me, talking to me about my dad too and stuff like that. So it was a really cool moment. I feel like that really started everything at Methuen. I feel like that game was huge. Yeah, well, what, what, what did you guys do defensively in that game just to – Give yourselves an extra ball. So they, they were huge out there, yeah. a lot bigger than us. You know, we just came ready. We played hard, as hard as we could every play. We hit them every single play, make sure they were feeling it. Just playing tough with doing football. Yeah, definitely. And then now transition, next next season comes up, comes along, more high expectation for you guys. And it seemed like people thought the offense was going to take a dip with mm -hmm. losing some of the other guys, but it was just – <laughs> it just it's kept going, refired. yeah. yeah, hell yeah. And refine, retune, and just going back at it, adding mm -hmm. new pieces. Uh, you know, when you guys came into that season, what was the, what were you guys trying to prove to everyone? Yeah, I mean, even like, I mean, obviously there was, we had our doubters that said like, oh, like you literally lost your entire offense. Like ultimately, I think it was just me, uh, our tight end, and SC Tuma at the time, and then like one offensive guard named Jared Ray. I think that was it, just us three. And we all, us three, we're all confident that we can get the like the next lineup ready, the next group of young guys. And the same thing, we just started work right away, right in the, when the winter came, we were lifting all together. When spring came, we started working out, like out on the field, we got our work in. And then summertime, we started installing our plays. So that way when we went into the season, we were all ready, we all knew yeah. everything. And then honestly, I just knew that if we just all put in the work together, like if, if they just, came under our wing and just listened to what we had to say, yeah. I think we could get it done. And really, they were all really good at that. They all listened to what we had to say. They all listened. They all got the job done. And obviously, it worked out for the better. Yeah, with you guys, it, it's with your team, it's not like a one-dimensional team. When I say that, like, like offensively, it's not just like a pass-happy team. It's like mm -hmm. you guys, you guys, if you want, you can just spread it out and, and sling the ball all over the place. Or you can just line up in I formation and just run it down people's mm -hmm. throats. Was that one of the things that made it so tough for you for teams to kind of play you guys? Because at any point, you don't know what's coming. Or you might know what's coming, but can you stop it? Yeah, I think definitely because also like our coach, I know, I'm sure you know, yeah. he loves to do a lot of trick plays. Yeah. So he's always keeping the defense guessing, always like switching up the offense between like spread, like you said, or the power offense can do really anything with our offense and I think that helps us out a lot because 
defenses have to scheme for like a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for them to stop one thing, especially when every week we're putting in new plays. Yeah, yeah. For you two, well, this upcoming season will probably be the first time you two won't be on the same team for for, for the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, seeing each other come up uh, from from youth football and then through high school, just like the success you both have. How how's that been? Just seeing each other's each get better each year and get all the accolades. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, when we were younger, like first couple of years, we were on the same team. And I was really, I was like playing tight end, he was playing running back. So it was a lot different. I was like, mm -hmm. I played tight end most of like my Pop Warner career. Mm -hmm. And and then after a couple of years, like the age difference, it was weird with Pop Warner at the time. But like we, yeah. like I was on the older team, he would be on the younger. And we didn't really play with each other, I think from like fifth grade, for me, fifth grade all the way till sophomore year of high school again. So that's like, four or five years so it was a while before then but obviously I still watched him succeed and just grow as a player and I think really like from eighth grade up until like sophomore year I think the biggest thing like I like saw was like defense obviously I knew he was a hell of a player on offense mm -hmm. but defense like he became like like an animal compared to what he was like, he yeah. would never really honestly just he was a linebacker in Pop Warner but obviously transitioned to safety where it was more like his role in high school mm -hmm. and he played really good he stepped up big in that every game had a couple of key tackles right in the beginning of the game and that was huge and even on special teams I know he had a couple of kick return touchdowns over the past few years and I think overall he just like really became a real well-rounded player overall which is good and his receiver game too yeah. he's always been a running back got a really good receiver too yeah yeah you Playing so many positions was that just your way of like making sure you get you find a way to get on the field by just playing yeah, so I many mean, positions? I'm down to play anywhere. I'm just trying to be on the field, help my team win, right. get the guys to succeed. You know, like I don't really care where I play. I'll play on the line if I have to. I'm right. just trying to get the win. Yeah, you have one of the one of the more <laughs> one of the most uh, interesting plays, or one of the best highlights that I've seen against North Andover. Uh, you nearly you nearly get tackled, break, broke a few tackles, throw you toss the defender <laughs> on your way to the end zone. That game, and that game, <laughs> I don't know. First, just that play specifically. I mean, what was going on on that play? Nah, yeah, that play. Like, I just kept my feet running. I never stopped. You know, uh, I noticed like I was actually just watching my like film a couple days ago, and I was looking at literally the play before. I almost broke one like the same way. Like I realized that they they couldn't really tackle me, so I just kept my feet root, uh, running, kept my feet moving, and then like once I got out the pile, I seen that kid. He came over yeah. me, and I just <laughs> stiff farm. I tossed him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and um, yeah, that that was uh, that game was my first game watching watching the team play, and it I, that's when I saw I was like, okay, these guys are going because it was kind of it was um, you were doing most of the work early on, and then fourth quarter came. Uh, you, that's when the passing game started. A little bit. For you guys. Uh, yeah, like we can keep win. teams like really honest. Like we'll run the ball, we'll pound the ball the whole first half, and then we'll keep them honest second half, throw the ball. Like we can do whatever we want. Like that's a good thing. Like we have a good run game, and then if we want, we can obviously we have a good pass game too. Yeah. But we can do the best, like best of both worlds. Yeah, the other running back too, um, I forget his name. Phenomenal, Josh Kwaki. Yeah, yeah, he was. He animal. also had a good big game that, yeah, that he's, one. Yeah, he's, in my opinion, the most underrated player in the state. Yeah. Phenomenal on defense. He played varsity as a freshman too. Uh, that game actually against North Andover, his freshman year, he first play of his varsity career. He got a kick return, brought it up to like the 15 yard line or something. Him mm -hmm. too. He's like by far one of the fastest kids in the state too. He's phenomenal. But overall, just a great, great player. Yeah, and you set some records. I think so. A little <laughs> set bit. Set some school records. You set some school records. Mm -hmm. uh, your senior year really was a was a bang out year, mm -hmm. going out with a bang. Uh, you no, know, setting those records, man. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how's that? How did that? How did you feel? Just yeah, I mean that's that? cool. I mean, uh, in the Thanksgiving game, I think it was like late in the second quarter. It was, I think it was the play where I hit number nine because I think I was, I think I'm number ten all time in mass because there's one that like prep school kid, mm -hmm. and then but like MIAA, I'm number nine. So I remember on the play like right before they like announced like I was about to hit it like on the like the jumbo trial, like yeah. the, the speaker or whatever it is. And it was cool, like we were in the huddle and I was heard it. it was pretty cool. But yeah, like after, like my school even gave me my own football, wrote all like my records and everything. And overall, I mean, it's just really cool. It's like, it's hard to believe. I mean, over the like past few years, it's been tough, 
You know, we've had, like, we played some fair, like, good fair share of teams. Kids that, like, have played quarterback a couple years, too. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, I just wanted to, like, win games, keep playing the most amount of games I could. And ultimately, us playing a lot of games in the playoffs also helped that. Like, it got yeah. me a lot of stats, too. But at the end of the day, it was just about winning and just about the team. Like, if we could just keep winning and keep playing, that was the ultimate goal. Yeah. You also was record setting yourself. Yes, <laughs> so, uh, what was that like for your parents, seeing both their kids just <laughs> setting these records for the first schools and just you watching know, you guys? I know. They're definitely, like, so proud of us. They tell us every day, like, how proud they are of us and how much like how much good things we do and how much like good things we make like how we make the city look and yeah. like, we represent ourselves and our family good and they're always telling us how like how much they love us and how much we mean to them yeah um you both made the all state team yeah, yeah. Made, uh, uh yeah I, I think i was i was part of the super 26 yeah you made I'm the sure. all state Thank team all scholastic all state yeah, yeah, yeah all scholastic um when, when you got that information, um, how did you guys feel about that? Yeah, that was that was cool. That was exciting because obviously the Super 26, I mean, it's the best 26 players in the state. Mm -hmm. It's very select few. I think I think we have the banquet pretty, like, shortly coming up. But, I mean, obviously I don't know how many, like, kids from Methuen have made that because obviously I know it's a newer thing too. But, I yeah. mean, I feel like probably one or very few, which is obviously – a really like cool recognition being from Methuen and, and just seeing my name up there along with my city too because every everything I love is just about Methuen I mean I feel like especially as a quarterback you want to embrace everything you're a part of but like me just growing up too I've always loved Methuen and everything about it yeah. so it was really cool overall definitely definitely and you're going to Stonehill going to Stonehill what next made, year that's what, the goal what made you what was that what went into that decision to go up there to um, Tuesday, at the say. end of the day a uh, couple of things I wanted. Uh, if it was close to home, uh, that's what I wanted. But I mean, if it wasn't close to home, it was all right. Yeah. But in my college search, I mean, I'll, I'll, at the end of the day, like the goal is to play Division One football, and I wanted to do that along with getting a good education, and I want to pursue going to the medical field. So I knew that Stonehill has a good health science program, yeah. and that way, because I don't know exactly what in the medical field, but I know that. If I take health sciences at Stonehill, then I can move on to whatever I wanted probably because it yeah. gives me a wide general variety of like just information for any like any place in the medical field. Yeah. So and then but close to home is awesome. Only an hour away. Division one school. Uh, great, great people. The oldest co coach on the staff is only 38 years old. Mm -hmm. So we got a young coaching staff, which I love. And overall, just the campus is nice. The people there. Mm -hmm. I think 80 percent of the students there participate in some sort of athletics so everyone there can relate to me no, so yeah. I mean overall I think Stone Hill is like the best fit for me yeah definitely definitely what's, what's what are you gonna miss the most uh, playing with your brother having your brother on the team um definitely like the leadership in his IQ I mean every single play he like he knew what he was doing he knew how to get the team fired up stay everyone like make sure everyone stays focused during practice during off-season lifts yeah. everything like that you know he's just a great leader it's going to stink to not be able to play with them next year, but I think we're going to have some guys that will be able to step up, fill in jobs, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, maybe not as good, but, you know, it's definitely going to be a big loss for us. But. Yeah. Another big season coming up for you yeah, as well. We expected, <laughs> expected that. Uh, before we get out of there, please plug in your social media. If folks want to follow you and all that good stuff. That's your camera right there. Sir, uh, Shane underscore Eason. 21, I believe, is my Instagram. <laughs> and it should be the same thing on Twitter. Uh, for my Instagram, I got Drew.Eason, and then for Twitter, Drew underscore Eason17. All right. Fellas, appreciate sir. you guys appreciate for taking you. the job. Thank there, you. Man. Appreciate it. Y'all been watching another edition of Athletes Corner. Have a good one. Once again, I'd like to thank Drew and Shane Eason for coming on and chatting with me. Had a great time with them. Hope you all enjoyed the episode. We're out of here. Have a good one. I'm Kyle Kabongo.